Hi everyone, uh, this is the first in a series of Revit architecture tutorials. So once you open Revit up, you'll come to this screen. As you can see here, this top line, um, Revit saves most of your recent projects. Um, so you can easily open them uh, from this screen. So as you can see, I have NYC Columbia site plan here. Um, it also saves another type of project file called family files. Um, and these files are used for components that you bring into Revit. And there's also a resource tab down here in the third row. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open a new project up here under Projects. We're going to hit New. So while Revit's loading, um, our goals today are to create uh, terrain and uh, a, basic, a basic house so that you guys can get started and play around with Revit yourselves. So when you first open a new project file, um, this is the Revit user interface. Uh, you can see up top you have uh, what's called your quick access toolbar. And here are a couple of shortcuts. Uh, you can add any icon to this upper toolbar up here by right clicking it and click add to access, quick access toolbar. It's a handy tip if you're repeating something over and over again. Here we have in Revit what is called the ribbon, and the ribbon has all these different tabs. Um, we'll go through some of these options today, but you can look through them yourself. Um, you kind of see some of them are straightforward, like if you want to create a wall, you click this tool button, um, so on and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click Massing in Sight, because we want to start off by creating a topo surface. Now as you can see on the left hand side over here, we're on a floor plan right here under the properties palette tap under the properties palette it says floor plan and then if we go down to our project browser which is the window right below our properties palette you can see level one is bolded so that means we're on floor plan one that is what is open in this window currently on the right hand side now i can restore this window to have it floating or I can maximize it within here. We want to create a topo surface so we're going to open up the site. Now if I restore this down you can see that Revit keeps open all the windows that you open from your project browser over on the left hand side. So you just want to keep that in mind when you're going through and opening different views. If you have too many views open there might be might bog your system down so just just keep in mind that you can manage your tabs and you can do this by going to the View tab, and you can hit Switch Windows to switch between windows. You can also close hidden windows. So if I do that, it just closed the windows behind. So I'm going to open Site back up. You can also cascade your windows so you can see all of them open. Or you can even tile them if you want to work side by side. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of Project 1 and open up the site. Now, as you can see, there are, three, there are four um, squares with triangle ends. These are your elevations. So if you ever create something that's larger than these elevations, you can highlight them. And by highlighting, you just left click and drag. Um, and depending on which way you drag works much like other programs. If you left click and drag to the left, you just need to touch the object as you can see here and it will select it. If you left click and drag to the right you need to highlight the entire object for it to be able to pick it up. So if you ever need to move these you can highlight it and if you hover over an object once you've selected it in Revit it'll come up with this move arrow. If you click and hold, left click and hold, you can then drag it and move it wherever you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and move these back a little bit. You can do so yourself and play around. As you can see this in the center of the site area, we have this blue triangle and circle. This is your project base. So this is essentially your origin um, in AutoCAD. So we just are going to leave that there for now. Now as you can see on the floor plan, it's a 2D representation. 
And to zoom in and out, you're going to use your mouse wheel and just push it in to zoom in, pull out to zoom out. If you want to pan in a floor plan, you can click down the middle mouse wheel and just move it back and forth and that will pan your 2D representation for you there. So we're going to go back up into the ribbon, click massing in sight. We're going to create a topo surface. So as you can see, that button is right here, topo surface. Now as you can see, if I hover over topo, topo surface, it highlights in blue and it also comes up with a tool tip. Now this is a medium level tooltip, and it gives you a certain amount of information. And if you saw just there, when I hover over it, it gives me the medium help tooltip, and then it extends into a larger help tooltip, which some have a video. If I come over to site component, some just have an uh, image representing what it will show you. So we're going to go ahead and click topo surface. Now, as you can see, my screen changed. It took me in a completely different ribbon. It opened up a Modify Edit Surface ribbon, and it framed it in green. This means that you're essentially in a separate portion of your project. You can't edit anything else within the project if you're in one of these. So make sure if you can't do anything else, something's grayed out, make sure you're not in one of these Modify Special Places. So when you create a topo surface, Whatever's highlighted in blue is the operation that you're currently doing. So right now, place point is highlighted. So all we're going to do here is we're going to do a simple square topo surface. So you can go ahead and click points onto the topo surface. So I just clicked four corners all at the same elevation. Now if you come up here just below all of your ribbons, you see modify edit surface with an elevation box and you can select a different elevation. Now what this allows you to do is to create points that are higher or lower. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this a hill. So I'm going to make a 10 foot elevation change. So I'm just going to type 10, 10 feet and in Revit you don't even have to type the foot mark. You can just type 10, hit enter, Revit knows that you mean feet. If you want to do inches however and only inches you actually have to put the inch tack and Revit then knows you want inches. If you want to do feet and inches, you can just do 10 foot space 6 inches. Hit enter and it knows that you mean 10 foot 6. So I'm going to go ahead and then place a square within my other square. And as you can see, Revit knows that you, the elevation is different. So it automatically makes the contours in between your two squares. So I'm going to go ahead and once you're done creating either a component or you're working on something in specifically within your project, you always want to make sure you click this green check mark. If you don't click the green check mark, it won't save anything that you did. So I'm going to go ahead and click the green check mark. Now this is physically created within Revit and it's physically there. I can always go back and change this if I click on it and I click the edit surface. As you can see, my ribbon changes as soon as I click on it and it gives me more options to do with whatever I click on. So I can click edit surface and now as you can see I'm back in this same ribbon that I was before. Now if I go ahead and I make a change and I don't click on that green check mark again, then none of my changes will be saved. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit the red X and it's going to prompt me saying, you know, you're going to lose all of your changes. So I'm going to say yes, I'm sure. And as you can see, it just reverted back. So you want to make sure if you want that change to stay, to go ahead and click that green check mark. Now, as you can see, if I'm selected on something and I don't want to be, I can just click off of it in the white space and it deselects it. I can also hit escape once and that deselects it. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this change. Now say I want to see what my site looks like in a 3D view. There's two ways you can do that. If you go up to your quick access toolbar, you can click on the house, and this creates a 3D view. Now to navigate in the 3D view, what you're going to use is primarily your middle mouse wheel and um, a few keyboard shortcuts. 
So if you want to pan, it's the same way. You just click on the middle mouse wheel, pan. If you hold shift down and click the middle mouse wheel, you can orbit. So we can see that we've created a, a topo surface. Now Revit doesn't create a, a, a mass underneath your topo surface, but it knows that that's a top, and if you do a rendering or something, it will fill in below the topo surface. So now that we have our topography, we're going to go back to an elevation. And you can see, so that's on your left hand side under the project browser, I just clicked east elevation. So you can see Revit automatically knows that you're in an elevation view. If you zoom in using that middle mouse wheel, you can see Revit already defaulted and gave me two levels. So it gave me a level one and a level two. We can change these levels in multiple ways. We can either click on them and drag, or we can type in the level that we want. So you can go ahead and play around with that. We can also add more levels. If we go to the Home tab up here on your ribbon, click Level, and this gives another feature of Revit. If we hover near the end of something else, you can see this blue, dotted blue line comes up. This knows that Revit, Revit knows that you want to align this with this piece. So to create the level, we're just going to use whatever dimension you want. So we're going to do 10 foot here. And then we're going to drag it across to the other side. And you can see that it knows it wants to align here. So we're just going to click to finish it. If you hit escape twice, it brings you back to the modify. That's a good feature to know. If you're ever in um, a modifying window, as we are now, you see the green again, and you want to get completely out of it, you hit escape twice. Now, if I select the level, you can see on the right-hand side, there's a checkbox with a label. If I uncheck that box, the label disappears. If I check it again, it reappears. I can put double labels on each side or only one side. You can also see that I can lock things. Locks often come up, and you can lock them. So if I don't, for some reason, want this level to be aligned anymore, I can unlock it and have it not be aligned. If I align it again with the others, you can see it automatically locks again. So that's just something to keep an eye on if, if forever, whatever reason, you can't get something to lock or unlock, or move, or, or not move. So now that we've set some levels up, we're going to go ahead and get started. You might want to play around with your levels to get them exactly where you want them to be. For example, I'm going to have a foundation level, so I'm going to move my level 1 up to, um, we're going to do 6 foot above the topo surface. I'm going to rename this foundation. And it's going to prompt you to say, do you want all corresponding views to be renamed? I'm going to say yes, because when I cut a section or have another floor plan, I want all of those to stay. Now, as you can see, it changed. So that's something to keep in mind. Say you want that level one to stay, you can just undo by control Z. You might want to rename a level floor, a level four or a new level that you just created, the foundation instead. So you keep the, the levels the same that you already created. So I'm going to go ahead and make this at the foundation at, oh, we'll do six feet. Level one, 10 feet. Level two at 20 feet. And level three at 30 feet. So that means I have 10 foot levels now with a four foot foundation level. So now that you have that all set up, we're going to stop there for a topo and we're going to continue on to the next tutorial. So feel free to follow on to the next video. Again, you can get back to a 3D view. Now, as you can see, you created a 3D view. You can just double click on that over on the project browser and you can see the lovely topo surface that you just created. Now if you want to see this topo surface, you can come down here 
bottom left and you can click the visual style and you can click shaded and you can see your topo surface that you created right there now if you click on it and you come over to the left hand side where the properties are you can see there's a material so you can click that material and it'll load a materials palette if we scroll all the way down we can see a whole bunch of different site materials so we're going to click site grass and it'll update and you can play around with this you can have different surface patterns you can play around with different appearances we're just going to go with the, the generic Revit one for right now so we're going to click OK if we click off of it we can see that it changed in our shaded view so that's how to the basics of topo tool